Hi, in this video we're going to be discussing PCBWay's turnkey assembly service and what we have in front of us today are some new PCBs that we've had assembled at PCBWay. So let's have a look inside the box and see what we have. So we've got some stickers, a pen, we've got a few unpopulated PCBs and then we have our assembled PCBs here and they appear to be packed in anti-static bags. So let's take a closer look. So this is the next PCB in the Aquarium Light project. This is the LED driver board, and you can probably recognize the high current LED driver up at the top here. And then we've got four smaller LED drivers for the red, amber, green, and blue channels on that light. And this has been assembled using PCB Way's turnkey assembly service. So they offer a few different options for getting your PCB assembled at PCB Way. So PCB Way offer three different options for PCB assembly services. That is the consigned, turnkey, or partial turnkey options. So you always need to get your PCB manufactured at PCB Way, but you can either supply all of the parts for your board to be assembled. Then there's the turnkey option where you provide a bill of materials and PCB Way will then source those parts. Or there's a combination of the two. So if there are some very tricky to get hold of parts, that maybe only you have, or you've sourced some very specific components, you can provide those to PCB Way and they'll source the remaining components. Now there's not really any limitation in terms of what can be assembled, so you can have surface mount or through hole or a hybrid of both, and you can also have components assembled onto both sides of the PCB, and also onto any surface finish or any type of PCB that PCB Way actually offers. So it's a pretty much unlimited type of service, and what you do, is you provide your PCB assembly requirements. So when you go to PCB Way and click on the get assembly quote, you can choose what type of option that you're going for, the board type, so single pieces, or if it's a panelized board, and how many you want to get made. There's also a section here if you have specific requirements for very sensitive components, and then you need to tell them the unique number of parts number of SMT parts and number of through-hole parts because the through-hole parts almost certainly are hand-assembled as additional items at the end. And then further down, you actually choose your PCB specifications and that's the same as usual. So you've got all of your normal options, uh, the standard FR4 boards with as many layers as you need, different color, there's no limitation there, or you can have it assembled onto a aluminium, Rogers, HDI or copper PCBs. So today I wanted to talk you through my journey for getting some PCBs assembled at PCB Way and what I thought of the service. So first of all, I wanted PCB Way to supply the parts. So I selected the turnkey option and then started filling in all the details. Now they do need to know how many unique parts there are and then the number of parts in total. So I filled that in, that data was available from my PCB software. Uh, I'll leave the quantity for a moment um, and then Further down is where you select your PCB specifications. So I've got the normal size here. Uh, five PCBs is the minimum that we need to get made, which is fine. It's a simple two layer board with black solder mask and white silk screen. I went for immersion gold finish and one ounce copper. Now onto the quantity. At three, that seems to be the sweet spot for my particular PCB. If you change that to just a single board, you can see the price remains exactly the same at $86. And three pieces, $86. And then if you get four assembled, for some reason, it jumps up by quite a significant amount to $174. So I'm not sure the reason why. Presumably the pricing is based upon the number of parts that you're getting placed. However, obviously bear in mind that as you increase the quantity, there will be more components on the board, and as I've selected the turnkey option, the price for those components does increase. Now, in terms of what files you need, basically you need the bill of materials, the Gerber files, and then the pick and place file. And the Gerber files are just the same normal files that you'd normally have for getting some PCBs produced. Then you've got the bill of materials, and it's slightly different depending on whether you want PCB way to buy those parts for you. But essentially, there is a, a template for the bill of materials. And I extended it further to make things a little bit easier for them. I actually selected the LCSC part numbers here. And the only part that needed to be purchased from elsewhere was the inductor that was from DigiKey because LCSC were out of stock of that part. So I provided this bill of materials. 
And this is essentially what they ordered the components based on. Now, it does indicate that primarily they will use the manufacturer's part number to select parts. So presumably if they already have some of these parts, then it will use the details there instead. But there's no harm in providing the part number um, if you have a preferential place to order the parts from. Now, in terms of the pick and place file, I didn't need to make any modifications to it like I have done with other suppliers. They were quite happy to accept the standard pick and place file from my particular PCB software. And it turns out that that's pretty much the case for any PCB software, despite the format being slightly different for every piece of software. So that's quite nice. I didn't have to make any changes there. And then essentially all you do is once you save to cart, you can then attach the Gerber files, the bill of materials, the pick and place file, and then there's the option to upload any other files that might assist PCBWay with the assembly. So here is the order that I actually placed. Now the PCB was four layers, not two, so the price was quite a bit more, $178 for those PCBs. But the assembly service, including the parts, was only $103, which in my opinion is actually quite a good price for complete turnkey solution whereby they ordered all of the parts that I wanted them to order for the board and there was no restriction over the particular parts that we could have assembled onto that PCB so I had full roam to select whatever parts I wanted to for my design. Now onto the timeline you can see I placed this order on the 30th of November and I actually received it on the 16th of December so not too many days there about 17 in total it says the PCB itself would take 45 days to be manufactured. I think in the end it only took three days, but the bulk of the time here was 20 to 25 days for the assembly, and the majority of that is there to take into account the amount of time it takes to order the components and for them to arrive in. And that timeline got me slightly concerned because I wanted to get this done at Christmas, which is why I placed the order quite prematurely, and now means I have to make a slight modification to the PCB as a result of what we found out about those LED drivers. So a little bit annoying there, but certainly shouldn't be a problem. And in reality, this was quite a lot shorter, as you can see by the timelines, 20 to 25 days plus the five days here would have meant actually I would have received this order at the end of December, potentially the start of January, and it's about half of that time. So quite a bit quicker than estimated. Now we actually ended up with six PCBs, so we've got the three PCBs assembled and then they shipped the remaining boards that they have. So we've got three completely unpopulated boards and let's take a closer look at these boards and also at the quality of the assembly. So a look at the PCB itself and there's absolutely no problems with the PCB material. Everything about that has been constructed very nicely as we always see from PCB Way. In terms of the assembly, you can see here we probably haven't quite got as much coverage of the solder paste as we would normally like to see. So you can see here there's some areas of the gold pad where the solder paste hasn't expanded to. And that is a common trait of some lead-free solders, especially where it has quite a low flux content. All the flux content has evaporated somewhat. Um, also, this can happen if the reflow profile isn't quite perfect. You can see it a little bit more here on this heatsink pad the solder hasn't really spread any further than what it was on the stencil. So a minor cause for concern here. Everything else looks okay apart from the 0402 components over by this connector. And so here are the 0402 resistors and it looks like potentially they have been reworked by hand or something wasn't quite right with the reflow process. They are all electrically connected okay but you can see here we've got a little bit of blobbiness there from the solder paste. We haven't quite got coverage here. And I don't know, it almost looks like these have been touched by a worker of some kind. It doesn't look like it has gone through the standard refo process. So I obviously have some thoughts about the assembly service. And I wasn't able to get any answers really from the rep that I normally talk to. But for me, I can't quite see how they can offer a complete turnkey assembly service on such low volumes of PCBs without the pick and place machine actually being a human. It doesn't seem to me viable to be able to set up a pick and place machine for just a few components and you know assemble those onto just a few numbers of boards. Normally if you're setting up a pick and place machine you're going to be loading reels of components onto there. It doesn't make sense to try and load just a strip of 10 components. Uh, you know um, we've got four inductors here 
uh, 12 in total. They probably ordered 20, but is it feasible to load 20 of these components into a pick and place machine? You know, this inductor here is one unique part. There's only one of these on the board. And it just, just doesn't seem likely to me that they have set up a pick and place machine just to place three of these parts on their own. So um, it's kind of a question that's going to go unanswered, but it is just amusing of mine that potentially someone here in China had to actually put these components on this board exactly as I would have done in my lab and run it through some kind of SMT oven to reflow all of the parts. So anyway, that's just my thoughts on how they've made this service potentially feasible. And in my case, the PCB was quite a large proportion of the total order cost. That's because the PCB is slightly bigger than the sort of standard 10 by 10 centimeters. And also it is a four layer PCB. Also, this package here did catch me out because the pad to pad spacing is so small, you do actually end up paying a slight premium for a specific service on this board. So it was quite an expensive board, but the assembly and the component price was really quite attractive. So the way it works is once you submit your order, they go away, work out what the cost of sourcing the components is, and then they come back to you with a price for the assembly. And as we saw, that was $103 to source all of these parts and also to assemble them onto the PCB, which in my opinion is well worth the price of me not having to sit here and put these components onto the PCB. So I'm not going to try and get this PCB up and running in this video, that will be in the next one. As you know we've got a few changes to make around the high current LED driver but we'll also try and get these ones up and running. So hopefully you found the information useful and until next time, thanks for watching.